couple studies out of prison. Uh, one right off the bat has a biblical link. Uh, it's a study from 2022 of, you know, the more fish people ate, the less depressed they were. I think of the Christian symbol of fish and, you know, and the, the Mediterranean diet that uh, was of biblical times. But these are studies from prison that show that people were healthier when they had better nutrition. Mm -hmm. An earlier study from 2002 had just a, was a pure randomized control trial. They took, you know, 100 prisoners and gave them a supplement that was uh, fatty acids, a nutritional supplement, and 100 prisoners, they gave a placebo. So they all got the pills. The doctors didn't know which was which. And at the end of it, they found like a 25% reduction in violence among these prisoners in this prison who had the nutritional supplement, the actual supplement. I mean, what they seem to find is prison violence went down in the prison. And of course, you might wonder, would they have not been prison in the prison in the first place if they'd had more nutritious diets where they'd help them with more impulse control and other sorts of things? So relevant to this study, the, the case says we need to spend thousands of dollars more to provide mental health care in federal prisons. What if instead we provided them better nutrition? Now, so that's part one. Part two, which makes it complicated, everyone seems to disagree about what's better nutrition. If you right. look online on prison food, they say what these prisoners need is healthy whole grains and fruits and vegetables and lean meat and blah, 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 and, and legumes. But others say, no, ancestral eating, ketogenic, paleo is far better for mental health. And I turn here to recommend to students the website Metabolic Mind and the project of the Bazooki Fund. And this begins, to my knowledge, with Brian, uh, Brian Palmer and Georgia Ede, who are both uh, uh, metabolic psychologists who've been treating college students and their patients, psychiatry patients, with a ketogenic diet. And this is even people with severe schizoaffective disorder and bipolar they change their diet, they change their mind. That's the title of George Ede's book. So it's yeah. like, wow, they're now presenting at uh, conferences. They're getting funding from RCT trials. It's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, but th there's also, I mean, it's not just that, that, that why, why there's a 25% decrease and not a 60 or 70% decrease in violence. A lot of this goes back to I mean, which which is not anything to do with healthcare is their relationship with their fathers or their lack of relationship with their fathers. Uh, and so if the fathers and the families were doing the job that they're supposed to do, which is to, according to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6, 4, to teach their kids how to love God with their heart, soul, mind and strength. And so if the fathers would do that then the kids would know how to love God. And if you love God, then you end up loving his creation. Uh, if the churches were doing their job in holding families accountable and shepherding the flock and all of that, then we would have stronger families, which would give us a stronger community, stronger government, a lot less violence. And so it, you know, so health might help, but when you're looking at it from a debate perspective, is it going to make it that much better uh, than other things that could have actually could solve the issue or to um, to make things even more better that you can't touch if it's since it's a healthcare policy on healthcare because you know discipline and family discipline isn't uh, healthcare policy. So, absolutely, I agree. <laughs> I had uh, difficulty with my father growing up. He was prone to sort of violent outbursts, uh, and probably I was too. And now I attribute that to poor nutrition. <laughs> so uh, maybe when he had a cinnamon roll, that's when he exploded. So, you know, it's true. We mix these things up. But yeah. I want to encourage students to do, at least with this prison reform topic, is look at the research. Now there is major yes. research done in randomized control trials that are showing, you know, people who were... Uh, where they thought their condition was chronic, someone with anorexia for 30 years changes her diet and it goes away. And this seems impossible. So uh, what you have in a lot of these studies are associational studies where someone writes down what they remember they ate. And then out of that, they say, well, those who 
more strictly adhered to the Mediterranean diet did better. Well, maybe, but those things aren't as valuable as actual uh, popul actual studies, uh, randomized control trials. But for prisons, you know, what if you had a thousand, what if you did a study at one federal prison where you provided a thousand dollars for high quality beef or for vegans, high quality, nutritionally adequate uh, diets for them and find out what the results were. One of the studies I heard pre presented at the Symposium for Metabolic Health in San Diego was done at universities where they took severely mentally ill college students and changed their diet to be ketogenic. And what this means, this isn't just a keto diet. This means they go into ketosis where their brain is burning ketones and not carbohydrates or minimal carbohydrates. They found in this study, everybody improved dramatically, significantly, a half or more completely resolved their mental health issues. Now, you can't do this on your own. You, you, you need to, decreasing these various medications for mental health has to go gradually. To be So there's yes. a lot going on. But if that's the case with college students, what would be the case with prison populations or veterans hospitals? In veterans hospitals, similar problem of people with uh, 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 post-traumatic stress syndrome, other mental health issues. What if those could be treated with nutritional ketosis or following these protocols that now have a number of different studies? Um, that's an exciting thing. I think students will enjoy to the, I mean, to the one extent, there's a long, unfortunate history of experimenting with prisoners. That's where major pharmaceuticals are tested on yeah. prison and veterans populations. Uh, the benefit of nutritional approaches would be they're not dangerous in the way that, you know, new, new drugs might be. Right. Yeah. And so as, as you were speaking, I, I think what I'm what may be the route to go for debaters, because if you know, nutrition is only an effects type of thing for health, then the whole nutritional aspect could be argued from the negative side that uh, you're you're wrong on your inherency. You're wrong uh, because inherency ultimately the the first question that inherency asks is did we diagnose the problem correctly? And if the if the diagnosis is wrong, then the treatment's going to be wrong. And so the negative side could be arguing, you guys have this wrong. This isn't any of these other things. These guys are just nutritionally trashed. Let's try this out first before we start adding, you know, any, you know, psychogenic types of medications uh, and, uh, you know, all of these other things. Let's start here. And because we've seen the studies on these kinds of things, let's begin with doing really good nutrition on these guys and then see how they feel. Because uh, if if having sound nutrition can alter how the brain functions and create uh, and changes just how you feel, so how you think, because all of that's tied together, then the negative teams could be really focused on nutritional aspects and say, we don't need this program. Uh, we, we may never need this program if we end up increasing their nutrition so much that things change. Yeah, I think, too, the negative could say, you know, Christian counseling for prisoners would be more healthy than having some psychologist who says, first, let's all agree there's no God and let's solve your problems. <laughs> so you've yeah. got that. But on the nutrition side, too, yeah, you could use it on the negative. Also, though, there's a lot of evidence and narrative for health care being food based, you know, being healthy means eating healthy. And so there's but I'll leave that to debaters to decide how best to address that. I just think to to be cognizant of this new research and you can look at other prisons. I mean, they always have examples from Finland and the way prisons work in other places. You know, there's a prison in Bolivia is that's downtown in La Paz and it you can't find the prison. It's just a neighborhood. But basically, yeah. it's a city neighborhood, and the prisoners are not supposed to leave, and they probably have an ankle bracelet. But basically, they live with their families, they work, they're able to eat, you know, traditional foods and so forth. But the argument is it's much less expensive and healthier for people who have 
been been convicted of wrongdoing and have a, a sentence to serve to be able to do it in a humane place, not locked in a cage like an animal, which is the status quo in our current prisons.